Good morning, everyone, and I want to thank you for joining us for this early morning press conference at, at the Capitol. It's truly an honor to be joined by so many incredible Arizona leaders here today, uh, especially and including Governor Bruce Babbitt. It's always wonderful when a former governor comes back to the ninth floor, especially someone who has been as consequential as Bruce Babbitt has been to Arizona. Our state is grateful for his bold leadership nearly 40 years ago when he worked courageously to pass Arizona's Groundwater Management Act. Yesterday, during my State of the State address, you'll recall that I said that water was at the very top of my priority list. This is by far the most pressing issue we face as a state. Yesterday, we had 17 days to ratify the drought contingency plan. Today, it's 16, and the clock is ticking. So we're standing here today as leaders from across party lines and from different branches of government to announce that we are committing to get this done for the future of Arizona. If ever there was a time when we needed to act boldly and work in a bipartisan fashion and get everyone to come together, this is it. Arizona's past, present, and future generations are counting on us to get this done. I want to thank President Fan. Speaker Bowers, Leader Fernandez, and Leader Bradley for committing to being here today and getting this done. And I also want to thank Arizona legend and giant on the water issue for his continued public service and leadership to the state of Arizona, and that's Senator John Kyle. And uh, last but not least, I want to say one more time to Governor Babbitt for being here and showing the true leadership at a critical time for our state. Senator Kyle and Governor Babbitt faced a generational challenge in their time, and this is our generational challenge. Senator Kyle and Governor Babbitt showed us that no challenge is too great for Arizona when we work together. This is what we must do now. We must work together and pass the drought contingency plan. I'd now like to hand it over to our new Senate president and my friend, Karen Fan. Thank you, Governor. Appreciate that. President. Thank you, everyone, for coming today. Obviously, this is a, a huge mon monumental tax, task for all of us to try and accomplish here. Those of us who grew up here in Arizona or have lived here for a long time, we understand that this is not a new issue. Uh, the 1980 Groundwater Water Act was something that everyone worked very, very hard on back then and creating the five active management areas. We are committed to getting this T DCP plan through. We are committed to working with all the groups. We understand that we have the agricultural committee, communities, the municipalities, everybody that is involved that needs to roll up their sleeves, help us get this across the line. It's important, it's necessary, and we have to get it done. So we are going to work together, we're gonna to make this happen, and we hope that everybody will stay with us at the table to get through all of these details. And with that, I will turn it over to my friend, Speaker Rusty Bowers. Uh, thank you, Governor, for letting the House uh, be here, uh, representing a large constituency with, uh, with the Senate President. As you know, myself and Senator, then Senator Griffin, now Representative Griffin, have taken a lot of time to go around the state and hear people's concerns about water. And they are deep felt. There's one unifying uh, pitch in our lives, and that is that water means life in Arizona. That's why this plan is so important. And there's nothing that we're holding back. We're trying to get all the, the folks together and have been encouraging all of them to come up with solutions. There's lots of facets on this issue. But there's a, a commitment on our part of leadership in the House, and you'll hear later from the minority leader and others there, to make this work. And we're grateful to be here with good folks, especially the leadership of the past, who leans on our shoulders and, and gives us a little provocation to get it done. And, and we're very much with you, Governor, and we want to make, this, make sure this is successfully accomplished. And thank you. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Bowers. Thank you, Governor, for allowing us to be here today. And thank you to all the stakeholders and legislators who have been working so hard as part of the Drought Contingency Plan Steering Committee to get us to this point. It, it hasn't been easy, but we are getting closer. And your work has been of tremendous value to our state. 
Thank you, Governor. Representative, Representative Rosanna Gabaldon and Representative Kirsten Engel from our House Caucus want to thank you, especially for your work. So thank you again. As the old saying goes, you don't miss your water until your well runs dry. We are here today standing side by side in spite of any differences we might have because we know we can't let that happen here. We have a deadline and we can't fail. I can tell you that my caucus understands climate change and the severity of this drought, and we strongly support authorizing the broad interstate agreement to use less Colorado River water going forward. And we can accept the basic framework of the intrastate implementation plan, which is still being worked out. But I will also say that we are anxious to see a draft of the legislative language and the full details. We would very much like to help write that language. We know that everyone will have to sacrifice, everyone. It's important that we work together on a responsible plan that treats water users fairly and does not lead to overpumping of groundwater that could result in fissures and sinkholes. I represent a farm community, Yuma. One thing I know is our farmers are second to none. I'm confident that we can figure this out. And I'm confident that as a state, we can embrace and seek out the most modern and innovative co conservation methods. And that this legislature will be remembered for setting aside differences and coming together as one of the most vital issues in our lifetime. Thank you so much. And with that, I'd like to introduce uh, Senator Bradley, Democratic leader in the Senate. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Governors, uh, Mr. Speaker, Madam Leader, and Madam President. I'm never going to get tired of saying Madam President. Uh, it always sounds pretty cool. We share y your sense of urgency uh, to adopt a lower basin state's drought contingency plan. The drought is not a single factor issue. Utilization of the water by ever increasing numbers of people is self-evident factor that requires all users to share in the responsibility of conservation and preservation. We also share responsibility in the environmental factors that contribute to drought conditions and the resulting lack of resource. The science of climate change should be helping frame these discussions. I am confident that, the sci that science will be the bedrock of the soon to be re released legislation. As Senator Otondo has kept me informed, while the DCP Steering Committee has spent months in delicate negotiations. The legislative language needs to be before our members and the stakeholders we represent as soon as possible to allow time for evaluation. The January 31st deadline is crystal clear, but it should be equally clear that approval from the legislature is not to be taken for granted. Let's get the language written so it, so we can, it can be properly vetted, ultimately passed on, and then sent to the governor by the deadline. The passing of the drought contingency plan does not solve this long-term and complex problem. It is the execution of the plan that will require sacrifice and compromise, and that will make the difference for Arizonans now and long into the future. Thank you. Thank you, Leader Bradley. And before we take questions, I'd like to ask Governor Babbitt, uh, do you have any words of wisdom for us? Down to the mic. Well, reluctantly, <laughs> I have just a few hundred thousand words. Thank you, Governor. <laughs> Governor, you've pulled off a remarkable moment here, and I hope you all really appreciate that. Um, the last time in my memory that we had a gathering like this, with the leadership, with the governor, the leadership from the legislature, Democrats and Republicans, was back in 1980, nearly 40 years ago, when we gathered here in this capital uh, to sign the Groundwater Management Act of 1980. So, Governor, this is an awesome moment. Uh, and all of you, the legislative leadership, uh, I stand in awe of the goodwill and the togetherness that we are all uh, demonstrating and celebrating here today. I want to add 
just one piece of context. Um, this DCP is about the Colorado River and Lake Mead and our share of that resource going forward into the future. And I think it's important to remember as we talk about DCP is not just Arizona. This is a plan which is now on the verge of acceptance by six other states, Colorado, Wyoming, Utah, New Mexico, Nevada, California, and Mexico, and the national government. This is an extraordinary construct that is delicately balanced, that has the future of all seven basin states riding on success. Arizona is the last piece of this puzzle. And I think it goes without saying that we cannot fail. We have a lamentable history further back in this state in which Arizona set off on its own course back in the early days of the compact. And every time that happened, we lost. In the last generation, we have finally learned the lessons of the past, and we have worked together very effectively. So this is the moment. We've got to do it once more. We cannot fail. And again, thank you, governor, legislators. It's an awesome event. Let's do it. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you, governor. We'll take a few questions. So, yes. Okay. I've, uh, I was uh, here when Governor Babbitt was governor. I remember some of the fights. Uh, it seems like, in terms of solving a drought contingency plan, we're not really dealing with the long-term issues. We've got from 2.3 million, I think, in 1980. It's over 7 million now. Projection of 10 million by 2050. And all we're doing is kicking the can down the road. Can the state support that kind of population? What are we going to do to ensure we've got enough water for 10 million people since we're struggling with 7 million? So this is, is step one in this next generation, Howie. We will punch through 7 million people in population this year. Maricopa County is the fastest growing county in the country. Arizona is the fourth fastest growing state in the nation. We think it's a positive. We think it's a leading indicator of quality of life and economic attractiveness. But in the past, like with the Groundwater Management Act, there was legislation that was passed, but there have also been generational projects like the CAP, like Hoover Dam, like Roosevelt Dam. There are future projects that we will lay the groundwork for, but what's in front of us today and what's urgent and what puts us in a position to lay the outline for what's next is the drought contingency plan, and there's 16 days to get it done. Quick follow-up, though. What is left? I mean, we've dammed the rivers. We're sucking out groundwater. In fact, we're going to put Canal County farmers back on groundwater, which was almost contrary. There are other technologies and innovations that we can bring to solve our water issue. The focus today is the drought contingency plan. Any other questions? Yes. Yes. Let's go to Brand first, please. A question for Governor Babbitt. Uh, two questions, if I can. Uh, all across Arizona this morning, people are taking their showers and flushing their toilets. They don't understand why we're here talking about this and how this affects them. How plainly can you present the issue and the challenge to them this morning? Well, it's never easy when uh, we all have tended throughout, I think, the history of this state to take water for granted. The tap is always there. The water always comes. Well, but this issue, DCP, not exactly a brilliant, charismatic title for uh, this process. Uh, once again, I would say, is about our future. And what makes it so important and so complicated and difficult is there are eight other parties that are looking at this resource ready to go to war and to fight it out uh, over their respective shares. And we've got this moment, seven states, Mexico, the national government. The 
come together on who gets what from Lake Mead. Now, how much more concrete do we need to be? Go have a look at Lake Mead, at that bathtub ring all the way around the lake, and about the very real possibility that a continuing drought could lower that lake to dead pool, at which point it's impossible to draw water, the power generation drops away, and in that kind of scenario, believe me, uh, people will see the result. But we can't go there. We can't go there. We can't pick a fight over this. We're at the threshold of a rational allocation of that water that you just go look at in Lake Mead. That's what it's all about. And so, and so That's, oh, I, I, does he get two questions? <laughs> 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 we follow up, then we're going to go to Mark. It's just the Howie sustainability question. You've written about this. There are more hard decisions ahead as soon as 2026. This state is built on growth. How sustainable is the water supply for this state to support that growth through 2026 and beyond? I just want to emphasize what Governor Ducey said. This is not the end. This is the beginning. It's the next step in a long continuing discussion about the future of a water resource in this state. You want my opinion? I think if we manage it well and really put our attention to it, that we have an adequate water supply for the future of this state going forward to my children and grandchildren and beyond that, who knows. But if we manage it well, uh, we can anticipate a future in which this resource will be available. What criteria do we have to determine who gets what? You were talking about who gets what. What criteria do we have in place or is that being worked out right now? And who ultimately decides? Well, the, cri the sharing criteria are at two levels. The first one in this DCP is our share vis-a-vis -vis six other basin states and Mexico. We're right at the threshold of getting that done. Now, maybe your question is, uh, how do we share internally in Arizona? Who takes what share of the cuts? That's beyond my pay grade. I refer you to the legislators standing here who are going to answer that question for you definitively in the next 17 days. And, and, and that's exactly right. That is what the essence of the drought contingency plan is, and that's what the language will answer. One more question from Mark from ABC, please. Governor, thank you. Um, can you be specific at all in terms of the nature of the sacrifice you're going to end up asking, the legislature is going to end up asking citizens? And then you also mentioned earlier about new technologies. What do you see coming down the pike that can help uh, deal with this crisis? Well, as, as I said yesterday in, in my State of the State, everyone is going to have to give, and I've been impressed by the willingness to do just so. I don't think citizens are going to see a change at all. This is going to be more around the constituencies and the, the industries that rely on, on this water, and that's what the, uh, the language in, in the bill that we pass on or before January 31st will, will represent. When, when will we see legislation on this? Well, we just opened session yesterday. I'm so I'm going to, yes, as, as we all are. But Governor, you just said citizens won't see this. It seems to me, and again, I go back to my good buddy, Governor Babbitt, that until citizens are involved, until it's hitting them, that we just flush the toilets, keep the showers running and everything else. Don't we need citizen involvement in this and, and, and a shared burden, not just, oh, you can keep flushing that toilet. Part of the discussion around water will be a, a culture of, of, of conservation that we'll want to con continue to to 
communicate and, and educate our, our citizens. 70% of the adults that live in the state currently were born somewhere else and came here, and they do have the expectation that they turn on the faucet in the morning and the shower is ready, and many of them uh, enjoy other amenities around water. So as I said, there is more to do here around innovation, around technology. That's actually for another press conference. This press conference is about the bipartisanship, the leadership from the Democratic side of the aisle and the Republican side of the aisle coming together along with leaders in the past that have demonstrated that this could be done, that we're going to get the drought contingency plan done. Thank you all for your time this morning. I look forward to seeing you soon. Thank you. Thank you very much.